Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about biconditionals. So biconditionals is going to be kind of a combination of a conditional statement and a converse. So biconditionals. So a biconditional, when a conditional and a converse are both true, we can combine those into a true biconditional using the phrase if and only if. Now we abbreviate that phrase just IFF. So it looks kind of like if, 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 if but it's just uh, means if and only if. The symbolic form has arrows going in both directions. All right, so let's look at an example. <clears throat> if two angles have the same measure, then they are congruent. So would that be true or false? If two angles have the same measure, are they congruent? They are, so that is a true statement. Now let's write the converse. So the converse is the flip of that. So our subject is two angles. So I'm not going to start with if they. I'm going to say if two angles because they are the two angles. So if two angles are congruent, I'm just going to do the symbol for congruent, then they have same measure. Okay, so I just read the converse. Now, would that be true? If two angles are congruent, then they have the same measure. That would also be true. So since both statements are true, we can combine them into a biconditional. Now, it does not matter if you use the original statement or the converse. It doesn't matter. But what you do is you drop off the if, and in place of then, we put the I which means if and only if. So I would say two angles have the same measure if and only if they are congruent. <clears throat> so that is how a biconditional works. So on your assignment, numbers one, two, and three, you're going to determine if the conditional statement is true. If it is, write the converse, and if the converse is true, we write a true biconditional. So if two segments have the same length, then they are congruent. So if two segments have the same length, are they congruent? They are, so that is true. Converse is just the flip. So then they, or if they, what is they? What's the they we're talking about? Well, we're talking about two segments, so I'm going to say if two segments are congruent, then they have the same length. Is that also a true statement? If two segments are congruent, then they have the same length. That is a true statement, so we can write a true biconditional. So remember, it doesn't matter if you use the converse or the original statement. You drop off the if, and in place of then, you put I F F. Um, two segments have the same length if and only if they are congruent. So you'll do the same thing with number two. So if x equals 12, then 2x minus 5 equals 19. Well, let's see, if I add 5, I get 24, divide by 2, I do get 12. So that's a true statement. So the converse, if 2x minus 5 equals 19, then x equals 12. That would also be a true statement. So we can write the biconditional. x equals 12 if and only if 2x minus 5 equals 19. Last one says, if today is Saturday, then there is no school. So the so the converse would be, if there is no school, then today is Saturday. Is that true if there's no school? Does it have to be Saturday? Could it be a different day of the week? I mean, it could be like a Monday, President's Day, and we don't have school. So, or a Sunday, Sunday we don't have school. So this you cannot write, you can just say no. All right, 
the next type of problem, you're going to be given a biconditional and you have to rewrite the two statements that make up the biconditional. So a conditional statement and the converse. So for example, an angle is right if and only if it's 90 degrees. So I need to have an if in front and take that IFF out and put it in. So then I can have a conditional statement. If an angle is right, then its measure is 90. Statement two would just be the converse. If an angle is 90, then it's right. If an angle is 90, then it's right. So I hope that helps with those. All right. Last but not least, we're going to talk about definitions. So a good definition uses clearly understood terms. It is precise. It doesn't use words like large or sort of, um, and it's reversible, meaning you could write it as a true biconditional. So I want to determine whether these are good definitions. An airplane is a vehicle that flies. That would not be a good definition, no. And if it's not a good definition, you have to give me a counterexample. So what's another vehicle that flies? Maybe a helicopter? Um, a triangle has sharp corners. Um, that's not a good definition. A square. You could say a road. When you're driving down a road and you make a sharp right, that has sharp corners too. So lots of, lots of counterexamples. A cat is an animal with whiskers. That's not a good definition either. What else has whiskers? Maybe a rat. A rat has whiskers. Um, perpendicular lines are lines that intersect to form four right angles. That would be a good definition because that's what perpendicular lines are. They are lines that intersect to form four right angles. So that's a good definition. So let's look at some on your assignment. But first, <clears throat> I thought this was cute. So they're trying to take pictures and the bunny is trying to give the bunny bunny ears, but he already has ears. So I just thought that was funny. Okay. <laughs> Moving on, let's determine whether we have good definitions. So, a segment is part of a line. Well, it is part of a line, but that's not a good definition. You'd have to describe it a little bit more, like a segment has two endpoints, something. It's part of a line consisting of two endpoints. I couldn't just say part of a line, because there are other things that are part of a line. What else is part of a line? What about a ray? A ray is part of a line. Um, a dog is a good pet. Well, that might be true. They're loving and we love our dogs, but that's not a good definition of a dog. What about a cat? I also have a cat and I would say that they are good pets. You might not agree with me, but I think they are. <laughs> or maybe a fish or a gerbil or whatever, a rabbit, a horse. Um, an angle bisector is a ray that divides an angle into two congruent angles. That would be a good definition. An obtuse angle is an angle whose measure is greater than 90 but less than 180. That would also be a good definition. Okay. Um, some of the problems you're going to just write as a biconditional. So like the first one says congruent angles are angles with the same measure. So you might say something like angles are congruent if and only if they have the same measure. Um, whole numbers are non-negative integers. You might say something like numbers are whole if and only if they are non-negative integers. So that's how I would write those. Okay. Um, on this one, this just has the symbol. So this is a conditional statement, P then Q. This is the converse, Q then P. This is the biconditional. 
So it gives you what P should be and what Q should be. So let P be the statement, angle A is an acute angle. So I would say for this one, if angle A is an acute angle, then angle A has a measure between 0 and 90. So that's just the conditional. Then number 15 is the converse, the flip. We want Q to go first. So if angle A has a measure between 0 and 90, then angle A is an acute angle. And then 16 is the biconditional. So it doesn't matter which way you do it. We'll start with P first. Angle A is an acute angle if and only if it has a measure between 0 and 90. So that's how you do that one. Number 17, you're going to write the converse and decide if it's true or false. If it's false, give me a counterexample. <clears throat> Let's write a good definition of a linear pair. A good definition of a linear pair. So these are not linear pairs. These are linear pairs. What do you notice about a linear pair? Well, they make a line. The angles are connected, which means they're adjacent. And what do they always have to add up to if they make a straight line? Well, they always have to add up to 180 degrees, which means they are supplementary. So we might say something like a linear pair are adjacent angles. So that you need to say something about them being both adjacent and supplementary. All right. And then you're going to decide yes or no, are those linear pairs? There is only one yes. I hope you can find it. Then these are just some angle review problems. I hope you remember that vertical angles equal each other, equal each other. Um, a linear pair adds to 180, and then complementary angles add to 90. So if you have any questions, just let me know. Thank you.